All right, testing, testing. It looks like we're working. <clears throat> All right, awesome. And Yeah, we're just giving a little bit more time. <clears throat> We're just getting a just getting a little bit more time before everyone else can join up. Oh. Hmm. Whoa! That was that that was awesome. Oh. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to check on Carly and Alexa's progress. All right, so they'll be on in a few minutes. <clears throat> oh, and looks like we have an Alexa online. Hello? Uh, Carly yells down from across the hall. It's loading, but very slowly.
Oh, and we have a Carly. says it's still authenticating, which means that I am struggling to find connection because of the storm, I'm assuming.
All right, so yeah, do apologize for the wait. It is just going to be a little bit longer. But as soon as they get on, we're going to hit the ground running. All right, they're hopping on now. Hold on.
Okay, hello, hello, hello. Ooh, Steve, Steve and Missy are in the chat. All right, so we're just get, so we pretty much got everyone here now, and I haven't got any message back from Sabrina, so I think she's gonna be a no show today. But she does have family visiting, so it's completely understandable. Okay, so we are running quite late here, so we're just gonna hit the ground running. So thanks for. Oh, I know why. Because when I tried, because when I tried logging in on the laptop, it it shut down the pop up screen. All right, so... Oh. All right. All right, so we're going to just get started right now. So... Hey guys, hey guys, glad you're here, Metroid TTRPG, Homebrew, IDM, poor schmucks, okay, good, done, anyone, anyone have announcements? Okay, yes, Josh, hell yeah. Nice. Yes, what?
Yeah. All right. Oh. Oh, by the way, we got a cake emoji message in the chat from Fat and Furious. All right, so we ready to play. Okay. Diving right into this as we begin with um the Met uh the Great Poison episode 2 landing. What? Oh crap, I forgot. Oh jeez. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, do you all hear it now? The void of space can be quite dangerous, and it is something that the White Dwarf Mercenary Company has become very, very familiar with. After coming in contact with a strange distress signal, the mercenaries decided to trace it to its point of origin, where they- Okay, this music is like way too loud. Can I lower this more? Oh. Oh, geez, and the... Okay, there we go. Now it should be working. Is it, guys? We're doing, We're doing so great. Well. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, it's working on the stream at the very least. Okay, that's good. And uh, just so you know, um... GT should be here in about 10 minutes. Perfect. All right. Okay, so Void of Space, very dangerous. White dwarfs know this. Traced a signal, found a science frigate, <laughs> boarded it, found it absolutely wrecked to shit, and uh, basically just Federation scientists and... Uh, Federation scientists and Quasar pirates that are just strewn about. Tried looking around for any idea of what happened. They found um, uh, security footage that the pirates hijacked this place for their own experiments, but apparently some went very wrong. And wow. now, apparently, they are now facing that escaped experiment before them as they try to take a detour <laughs> through the reactor core to get, <coughs> to get back to their ship. And that's where we left off right now. <sighs> and then there's an cartridge and a pear tree. And it's all great. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Great, sweetie, you're doing so well. Oh, I know I'm oh, doing well. It's all this technology that refuses to cooperate with me. I'm immaculate right now. That's fair. Solid point. <laughs> Ooh, it's gonna be a fun night. I am. I am so filled with fury. Okay. Well, one, my computer should have never done that. It's never had an issue like that before. It's because I'm here. It doesn't like me. Okay, so Carly, we just have to find some time to just go on your computer and just like clean. We need to get we need to get on your laptop, Carly, and clean out all the literal bullshit that's been loaded onto it. It's fair. That's, that 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 means you gotta get rid of all your special uh, Japanese cartoons that are on there. It's fine. Oh that oh that's a, oh that's on my desktop, and I'm not getting rid of that anytime soon. <laughs> Well, you're better off just uh, what's the word? What is the word I'm looking for? Um, hentai and is an art form. I was gonna say, sir, that is art. You cannot get rid of that. Uh, yes, and, th and this. I'm not getting rid of my tentacles. I'm really sorry. Well, it's uh, not gonna happen. Uh, yes, and you and this and this fine selection here is called Resort Boyne. 
<laughs> and, it, and and that is that is sprinkled cupcake specialty. <laughs> forgot about him. I'll get rid of mine when you get rid of yours. Yeah, that's not happening. Uh-huh. <laughs> there we go. Compromise. This is what marriage is all about. <laughs> okay. So, as you guys have made your way through the reactor core, just to kind of give you guys a bit of a refresher, you all hear a do 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 and now just hanging, hanging by its pinchers within like the actual cylinder of the reactor core itself, you see this massive, grotesque beast that looks like a cross between a praying mantis and a slug. Ew. And all of you are quite familiar with this. Um, you've all seen its normal sized, uh, brethren called the sluggers which are all the just those little like rat-sized parasites that are just space vermin this is a slugger queen um anyway now that being said though um before you guys engage in the slugger queen you hear wait for me and a lot of you look behind you and the slugger queen kind of looks up past you and you see your your team archaeologist suddenly arriving late <laughs> to the party, having followed the trail of mm -hmm. just the investigation that you guys left behind. Uh, Alexa, before we get into this fight, could you quickly um could you quickly uh, describe your character? Uh, sure. Uh, her name is Saloria Chevelle. Um. Uh, and she's a lot. She's a lot. I don't know where to start. <laughs> well, what does she look like? Oh, she's got, um, I put it in the chat. I, it's, a, it's a mix between two pictures. Um, shoulder length, dark red hair. Um, she has scarring over her, if I'm doing this anatomy right, her left eye. Um, and when she is, uh, she has olive green. Her other eye is olive green. Yeah! Yay. Right on time. Please continue. I, I'm trying. I'm not good at this. Um, and uh, when she's adventuring, she usually wears a black gator over her mouth and nose. Um, she's quiet, but uh, she's very snarky and sarcastic when she speaks. Love that. <laughs> it's my personality. <laughs> and um, she is she's knowledgeable, but she's does she has a lot of trust issues. So there's a, there's a there's her background is pretty deep. I'm still kind of working on it, but she just doesn't trust anybody. So even with the people she trusts, she doesn't really really trust. So it's it's got a lot going on. <laughs> All right, awesome. So with that being said, Alexa, your character, and uh, one more time, how do you pronounce her first name? That's a great question. So I did. Saloria. I like that. I actually don't. I actually don't know how to pronounce it. It's. I just. I just saw it on the D and D website. I'm like, that sounds good, and I just clicked it. I like Salora. I mean, that's really pretty. Good enough for okay, me. So we'll go. I'll get rid of the A. I'll get rid of the I. I'll just change it. Okay, we're going with Salora. So Salora, you run into you run into the reactor core, following the path that the team left behind during their initial investigation. And as you greet everyone, you then see the Slugger Queen just kind of hanging there looking at you and everyone else. What? <laughs> Slugger Queen. She's that gross. Here, oh. I'll push it forward. Oh. Can you hear us better now? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Remember, the microphone is... The, it's the audio input is the microphone, not the laptop itself. So you don't have to move the laptop; just move the microphone between you guys. Don't tell us what to do. I'm the DM. <laughs> That's all I do. <laughs> That's very valid. <laughs> Suck and <stop laughs> all right. So you notice the Slugger Queen. It notices you, and it lets out a very vile snarl as venom drips from its maw. And for the first time in this campaign, 
I would like everyone to roll initiative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what dice is that? So you literally hear. Oh, well, first oh. of all, they're not on your eyes. I was trying to change my eyes. Right here. Uh, yeah, that, that's not bad. That that's not bad at all. Oh! Oh, shit! Is that bad? No, that's great! Oh, I okay. got a nat 20. Sorry. Oh. Nice. Wow, very first roll, nat that's 20. Weird. Nice. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Okay, this is a different dice. Okay, I have my own at, um, at the house. I just oh. Didn't, I didn't think bring it. All right, so we're going to go around the table here. So, so Alexa, you rolled a nat 20. Is it an actual nat 20, or is it like a 20-something? 22. Like, 22. Okay, that's all I needed. That's your end score. Okay. And I get a 19. Okay. Cassie got a 19. Um, Dresden, what did you get? I got a 16, good sir. Dresden got a 16. Um, all right. Just no. making sure I get all this. Uh, Lila, what did you get? 21. Or, yes, 21. All right. Just making sure I get all this down here. Um, Cobalt, what did you get? Six. And lastly, Haunter, what did you get? You got a cat! <laughs> oh, look, at, look at his baby! Oh. Yeah. Got to it's, a, it's a tiny bubba. Look at the little fangs. Look at the little fangs. Oh, no. Cutie. Anyway, Haunter. Uh, Haunter, what did you roll for initiative? 17. 17. Okay. We are doing well tonight. By the way, you guys can still hear the music, right? No. No. Okay. On the stream. On the stream, you can. Okay. How about now? Yes. Kinda. Wait. No. Never mind. That was someone moving in their chair. Uh, On the stream, yes. That is so odd. Why isn't it coming through Discord? Discord might actually be muting the music now. Oh, let's we'll see, on our end. There we go. On our end, the volume is turned way down. Or check on your own the volume to see if it's... All right, give me just a moment. No, Evan. <laughs> Evan. It's Evan, if we each go on to the share screen on our Discord, just yeah. make sure the volume is turned up on each of ours, because it's coming through just fine. For us, it was muted on our Discord. Uh, so each each one of us has to click on the share screen, and then click, okay. and then check on the volume on that. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's, it was nothing on my end, technically. No, no, you're fine. Okay, okay. Let me just kind of move this back down a bit. All right, so just to reconfirm one last time, you guys can hear everything? Yeah, so yeah, on the on the stream we can, and on here we can. We just needed to uh, turn up the volume. Okay, perfect. Because now we get a music changed for the boss fight. Cool. I'm going to swap to my computer really quick, if that's okay. Of course. Dude, it took us an hour to get on because their internet's so crappy. Can we play <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, Alexa, you are a very lucky player because you're going first. Oh, goody. Dude, I consider that like a peak of luck because this is your first D&D campaign. Oh, goody. And... Who, who's on deck, Evan? Oh, sorry. Um, okay, so Alexa, you're up and uh, Lila, you're on deck. Okay. So what you want to do now is you want to click here, right there, uh huh, and then you want to click actions, okay, and you get one action and one bonus action. Okay. So how do you want to like do your first strike? What do you want to do first? Ice knife. Okay, so she's gonna cast ice knife. 
And oh, that's great. Oh no 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 no! Got the damage. You want to click? Oh, that's twelve. Um, a twelve actually hits. This is a very very fat target. Yeah. Yeah. Not to mention a squishy one too, apparently. A very squishy one too. So yeah, a twelve does hit. Three points of damage. All right, three so points of damage. That's gonna be your hit DC, which means that's like how much force you hit with. Okay. That's gonna be your damage. Okay. All right, Wait. so Silora, you you whip out a small device in your gauntlet that basically generates a small blade of ice, and you just fling it right at the beast, and you easily nick it like one in one of its feelers. So yeah, it definitely felt oh. that. All right. And then you get a Wait, then she gets a bonus action. We're gonna go down here. Okay. And these are all, that's your bonus action. Okay. Which is your different social, uh, sorcery points, or you have to do weapon fighting. You don't have to do that right now. A lot of people will do like a bonus action first. Mm -hmm. So, I'll let you decide that for yourself. Oh god. By if the way, everyone your... thank Josh yeah. for helping Alexa with her character sheet. No, no, Josh. Basically, holding my hand and telling me how to do it because I'm like, I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. This is your first campaign. I know, but still. Mm -hmm. So you can either end your turn or you can do the bonus. I'll just end my turn for right now. <laughs> All yeah. right. Next up is Lila. Cassie, you're on deck. And when he oh, says that you're on deck, that means that you're next. So, so you're okay. Mm -hmm. First thing yeah. Lila is going to do is she is, since she doesn't have any of her protection currently equipped, she is going to, uh, so she has some bracers that look like they're blue metallic scales. Uh -huh. And she's, she, she's, if you've seen the, um, if you, oh god, why is my brain blanking? The Mission Impossible movie with Henry Cavill in it, where he's in the bathroom, he's just like, he you reloads know, basically his arms. like, reloads. <laughs> So it's kind of, she does something like that, where she just kind of like shakes her arms down, and as she does that, this scale male armor like starts to build up and like finally covers her body. So she she just equipped her uh, her her scale male armor because otherwise she's slightly squishy for a uh, for a cleric. All right, completely uh, understandable. <laughs> And then she is going, so that was a bonus action. And then she is going to look at the creature and she is, she's kind of going to analyze in her head, like what might be the best approach to hit this, um, you know, squishy, squishy thing. Um, and she is going to, so it's hanging, right? It's hanging by, like, two pincers right now in the reactor core itself. Okay, so it's it's in the core, like, it's sealed in, like, the tube, the cylinder tube. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm oh. Then keeping that in mind, she is going to... I'm gonna have to double check on those in just a minute here. She is going to then look at Oh, let's see who is who is our squishy players. Our new player is. Define our... squishy. Like like low HP or low armor class. Oh. Because as far as that goes, I think we're all pretty squishy because we're only level five. <laughs> yeah, Fair. so... Who has the lowest armor class? Uh, class it looks like Cass. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Know. So... Yeah. I'm double checking really quickly on... Oh, Does anybody no. have any armor class lower than 11? Uh, no. I don't think... Uh, no, I have 12. <laughs> yeah. No. All right, perfect. So then, um, so then, uh, Lila's gonna look at Cass, and she is going to just put a put a hand on her shoulder, and she's actually she's she's holding like a 
it's a little silver silver piece but it's it's one of those it's it's um it's more like a mirror so it's a very reflective silver piece and she just kind of gently places it on on uh Cass's shoulder and uh cast sanctuary uh, you ward a creature within range against attack until the spell ends any creature who targets the warded creature with an attack or harmful spell must first make a wisdom saving throw on a failed save the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell this spell doesn't protect the warded creature from area effects such as explosion a fireball if the warded creature makes an attack casts a spell that affects an enemy or deals damage to another creature this spell ends thank you yeah so basically if if the if if he goes if the queen goes to attack cast it's got to make a wisdom save and if it fails it's got to attack somebody else all right thank you and that yes that ends my turn this time all righty cassie you're up haunter you're on deck <laughs> Yeah, but imagine that I hate Predator. Oh, excuse me. Um, what did we say he was because of copyright infringement laws? Predith, I think. Predith. Did I imagine I hate that design with, like, a passion. I can't watch the movies because they scare me to death. But I appreciate you, GT. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna cast Thunderclap, and the creature has to make a constitution saving throw of 14. Alright. Okay, so it rolled a 16. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh. Get uh, out of here, alright. Well, there goes that plan. Uh, uh, such a bull hockey. <laughs> um, wheel. Let me go. Um, 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 I'm gonna look at our fearless leader here, Cobalt, and I'm gonna whip out my um. It's like I don't remember what I what it is called, but it's basically like a teeny tiny little harp. And I'm gonna play a sweet solo on that like little harp, and he gets inspiration. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a Well, I appreciate you doing something for Bardic Inspiration. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault that you don't like how I do Bardic Inspiration. Inspiration can come in many forms. All but right. it has to be. Alright, so I give myself inspiration? Yes. Yeah. And okay. that is a 1d6, good sir. All right, cool. By the way, I'm just going to tell you all right now, the fight, this fight itself is not going to be very difficult or very long. This is like a tutorial fight for all of the new players here. Okay. Um, now, that being said, though, uh, Haunter, you're up, and Dresden, you're on deck. Dresden! <laughs> so, <clears throat> Haunter, being, being a very... Very annoyed at the sight of this, of this brood mother here. You know, he expected more. Wa wanted, like, an actual suspenseful fight, but he found this thing. <clears throat> um, question. Since it's hanging, how close to everyone else is it? We're in a oh. circular room, I would assume, F if this is Metroid. Uh, yeah, a very circular room with the creature hanging in the middle. So it's about the same distance in relation to everyone else. Okay, how far is everyone else? Uh, you're all kind of like standing in a curved line. It's like everybody at the end of Journey's End in Doctor Who, where we're all just standing around TARDIS, basically. Okay, I, never seen, I never seen that, though, but like, can you give me like, like, like a distance? Like, yeah. like meters like, or feet or inches? Feet or inches. Let me put it to you this way. If you're planning to shock the floor, don't do that. <laughs> or if it's something that goes out from you, move away from the group first. Yeah. Or okay, what you cool. can do, GT, is you can do what I do, where you ha where you hold your action until everybody runs away out of range. Um, that might take a very long time, and the creature might be dead before then. 
But <laughs> I mean, how about okay? Here, I'll just I'll just do something to ask some damn questions. So, um, <clears throat> uh, Hunter is initially going to start with uh, ensnaring uh, Strike. All right. And he is going to try and uh, walk uh, walk towards this. Oh, I guess he would have to leap. Or I guess leap towards this um, this brood mother with it and try and swipe at him with his wrist blades. Brood mother. All right, uh, roll to attack. He was almost 16. Never mind, it was a nine. Nine, unfortunately, is not enough. Yeah. All so, right. is that it? That, 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 that's all he has so far. <laughs> all right. Next up is the Slugger Queen. Oh, I I Dresden, you are on deck. But I wanted to leave it in suspense at least one time where in initiative the enemy was. All of you, you all see that the creature's mouth starts to drip even more with green venom. And then he just goes... As just a spray of acid just starts coating the entire platform you're all on. I need everyone to make dexter uh, dexterity saving throws. Okay, what do you want? Yeah, you got it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I do that every time. Step oh, you look very oh, happy. 20, 20. A nat 20 That's or a more like 20? It. I do that all the time. We're all just go immediately to that um, next rate. But if you're doing a saving throw, no, it's still no, bigger. It's, I, I it's, rolled a 14 out of plus 6. Right there, so okay, okay, so it's a dirty 20. Yeah, you know, we just go up top. Okay. But it's the same, so but you're fine. You said dexterity? Yes. A dexterity saving throw. I have a 13. You. All right, so we're, so we're gonna go down the line. Cassie. Oh, I got a, uh, hold on. I apologize. 12. I got 12. 12? Okay. Uh, Silora. Uh, 13. Haunter. 20. Dresden. <laughs> I got a 19. Lila. 6. Cobalt. 19. Um, unfortunately, everyone but Lila succeeds. And Every she's the healer! <laughs> well, that's, that's unfortunate. unfortunate. That's why it's everyone, everyone is able to react in time and basically hop out of the way, but Lila, unfortunately, you are caught unawares by the sudden spray of acid that comes out of the creature's mouth and you get hit by it. You take... six points of acid damage. Dang. Every, everyone else, however, gets off scot-free because you made the saves. All right. Next Are you up. Lucky, Lila? Next up. You is, know what? I'm gonna. Next time. <laughs> uh, next up is Dresden. Cobalt, you're on deck. Perfect. I will first cast Branding Smite so that whenever I attack the uh, mother there, she gets an extra two d6 radiant damage. All right. And how far away would you say she is from me? Uh, from you specifically, I'd say like 15 feet, 10, 15 feet. Again, 10, 15 this, feet. This, again, this creature is massive, so it's like he, it ta yeah. she takes up a lot of space. I'm going to use my laser, laser pistol to shoot at it. All right, roll to attack. All right, that is 14. 14 hits. Perfect. So, so first off, that'll be... 3d6 plus 4. No, I'll just roll on. Can't give you off of that. That's a lot of rolling. Do, 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 do. No, that's 6. And then I'll do the... No, that's 10. Oh, it actually did the math for... No, it didn't do the math. So that's 10 there. 10 plus the branding smite is... So, 14 damage for the first attack. Wow! Okay. <laughs> and then oh, I will... Carrying the team again. He makes OP characters. Yikes. Josh is going... the OP character. 
it shouldn't be allowed, but I'll allow it because you're on my team. When, like, when your DM is not I sure. offer to help all of you. I do. I offer to help all of you. You guys don't always take me up on it, so quit complaining. You did help me with mine. It is true. All right. Well, uh, uh, Dresden, is that the end of your turn, or do you got more? No, I get. I have a second attack. Oh, jeez, that's right. <laughs> so that, again, see, that is 26 to hit that time. All right. Yep, that definitely hits. And then, let's see, that is 15 damage with the laser pistol plus the branding smite here. Oh, uh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Get back here. Click on this one there. No, that's heat metal. No, get get out of here, heat metal. I did not mean to hit the damage for that. No, get out of here. That's not great. <laughs> no, I'm in Oh, I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> so 15 plus 5, that's 20 damage. Yep, uh, jeez. Okay. That's 120 damage. Uh, yeah, you took quite a huge chunk out of it. Um, right, so Dresden, Dresden just holds up his laser pistol there and just just looks at it, hits it twice, and it sees the, sees the damage done onto it and just goes... Yeah, you, <laughs> you have removed one of its mandibles. He just, he just smirks it. Oh. All right. Next up is Cobalt Sylora. You're on deck. All right. Well, what the hell? Why don't I do my very first Eldritch Blast? Yeah, you will. Eldritch Blast. Eldritch. Oh, yeehaw! Yeehaw! Yeah. Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. All right. So I basically look at this thing. I basically look at anywhere that is still like it, it could still do some serious damage, and I take my shot. Uh, I roll the hit DC in the uh, in the attack thing, right? Don't forget, you have you have bardic inspiration. I'm going to use that for the hit points. You can't, oh, you can't. use that for hit points. You can't. No, you, no, you can only use it for two hits, not the hit points. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, never mind then. Uh, yeah. You can get damage. You can add it to the attack, but not to the damage. Done. Oh, alright. Okay, well... By the way, that's a 21. Yeah, that hits. Okay, so I didn't really need the inspiration there. Uh, so... Let's see. A but you two. needed it in your heart. Uh, man, was... I mean... Two, two still does some stuff. I mean, this thing is already not looking good because of Josh. Yeah. Y'all have laser pistols, okay? <laughs> and laser rifles. Speaking of which, uh, I still have my bonus action, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have two weapon fighting. Does that mean I can use both my laser pistols at once? No, it just means uh, you can use your non-dominant hand. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so 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 as a so with two weapon fighting as a bonus action, you can use your non-dominant hand to like say have that laser pistol and shoot with it. You just don't get the extra plus at the end of the attack. So like so like for like say for as my laser pistol is a three d six, you don't get the plus four. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um. So yeah, I'll, I'll shoot with one of my laser pistols. Let's see. 15. 15 hits. Okay. So it's just 3d6. Yep. Yep. Alright. Uh, well. So. Okay, well that's still 12. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 12 takes a nice chunk out. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's gonna be it for me. Alright. Uh, alright. So now we're back at the top of the round. Sylora, it's your turn. Okay, she is going to cast uh, Burning Hands. So just quick cast. First level, so what you do is you do a spice, oh. your, your uh, spell slot. That's good. Um, it has to make a dexterity saving throw of 14. Alright. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it got an eight. It's it's dexterity <laughs> is not it's dexterity it's is so not much. high. So like you could say like she runs up and she grabs it. Yeah. And casts burning hands, and then you would go right there. That's what I'm just gonna show you how much damage you do. Oh good, I'm not good at that. Holy shit! Fourteen. Fourteen uh, points no. of burning damage. Uh yeah, fourteen hits. This thing is not looking good at all. But that's promising. <laughs> and then again, you have a bonus action, but you don't have to necessarily use your bonus. Action. The next bonus. thing Evan has us fight is going to be like the toughest thing to beat, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I say, wait, is 14 the damage or the hit? 14 is the damage. The damage. Because in order for it to hit, it has to, it had to make a dexterity throw of 14. And it failed. It, had a, it got an 8, so. Rock. <laughs> and, and you said that you don't want to do a bonus action. I don't. Then so you, I'm, you would just say that you're done. Okay, and I'm done. I step back, and or she steps back, and we're good. <laughs> All right, next up is Lila, and Cassie, you're on deck. Yay! So, having, having been burned by acid by this thing, Lila is like... Mm, she's she's although most of you guys can't tell anyways she's not super happy she's just kind of like hmm intriguing i think i want to study this thing but it needs to be dead first so <laughs> little runs runs up towards the thing would you say it's about 30 feet from us oh no more like 10 15. okay perfect even better then so <laughs> Lila runs up, and she is going to cast it to like wounds as she touches this thing. All right. Here you go. That was nine. That's a 16 hit. Yes, yeah, 16 hits. All right. I'm gonna do it. Do I want to roll the damage on here? Oh, That's three, 3d10. I mean, I, I, I pressed hard dice more than I <laughs> <laughs> That's why I did that during Josh's big fight. Because I was like, no, I'm not trusting D and D beyond. That would be twenty points of damage, sir. Wow. I can't believe I'm saying this so quickly, but Lila, how do you want to do this? <laughs> hey <laughs> So Lila as as she runs up, she quite literally just goes and she grabs this thing by the tail. And basically pulls a Hulk smash move and is just knocking it back and forth as she does She's it. like this teeny tiny Asmar, and I love that image. I'm a healer, oh, but oh, I'm a healer, but uh, yeah, uh, this thing this thing is fat, but it was not very strong. Um, now that being said, though, you easily just swing this thing around Broly to Goku style. And at the end of the, like the final smack, the thing just fucking pancakes with just green blood that just kind of sprays everywhere. That kind of gives off like a blue, like bioluminescence. Ooh, um, that's only... disgusting. Okay. She looks back at the rest of the group and just goes, "My apologies." <laughs> and she and she just kind of like brushes some of the goop off her. It does nothing because she's like coated in the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Cassie Great. walks up to Lilla and um, I'm going to cast um, Cure Wounds at first level. Dresden just looks at her and just goes... <clears throat> <laughs> and you get back six points of of uh, of a uh, Health. I am literally back to full health now. Yes! Sick. I helped. Yes, you did. I'm <laughs> so okay, proud of you. Hold on. Uh, guys, guys, hold on, hold on, hold on. GT, what were you about to say? Um, so, Hunter is now, like, absolutely annoyed. He's not showing it because his um, body language is pretty much just the same. Stand there and just go... <laughs> but he's gonna uh, uh, walk up, walk up to the brood brother and attempt to remove its uh, skull or like head and present it to uh, Lila. Uh, oh. uh, okay. Um, 
Roll me a roll me a survival check. Survival check. They have the skulls. Survival check. Okay. Well, I think I think survival actually has to do with like hunting and everything. Twenty-five. Yeah. So how much? How much was it? Twenty-five. Oh yeah, you so effort. And yet, I honestly should have given you advantage for this, considering the kind of character you're playing. But you don't need it right now. But yeah, Haunter, you like effortlessly, like a French chef, you easily take your knife and just peel away the skin and the muscle tissue and everything, and you have in your hands a completely intact, undamaged Slugger Queen skull in your hands. Um, you do kind of notice that because the thing still has a lot of its own blood covered on it, you do kind of feel like a little tingle in your hands. Okay. Um, oh, jeez. Another I'm Slugger Queen to... appears! Pew, pew, pew! <laughs> Alright, there we go. So yeah, you just feel like a light tingle in your hands, like you're, like you're holding like a live battery at the ends. But it, it's not it's not like hurting you or anything. It's just something like, huh, oh, that's different. Um, I want to present it to Lila as like a reward, like good job, you killed it. Good job, you guys. Um, Alright, so Lila, the giant Praedath, um, is does Hunter wear like the stereotypical like la gaucha mask? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He has like the his big bio mask that covers like his face and everything, but okay. he has like that's going on and like you know is freaking oh, yeah, plasma. Oh yeah, you got to have the fishnets. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so Lila, you don't you don't get the emotional vibe coming from Haunter here because of his mask and everything else, but this guy just walks up to you and he's just like, it's like it's like Tarzan giving Sabor to Kerchak. Yeah. <laughs> oh. My heart, my Disney soul. <laughs> yeah, Ly oh. Lila, like she, she takes it because she like number one, having observed Haunter for the last three years, and even having have met him before, because she knew Dresden previous, you know, before they all joined the team. So, like, she's she's at least observed enough of Haunter's behavior to know that this is. For him, it's a respect thing. Like, you you done good, and so she she much you know graciously accepts the skull and is like, this will be a fascinating study. Thank you. Hunter just turns and walks away. <laughs> she takes no offense whatsoever to that. She just looks at the skull. Shall we leave now? <laughs> All right, as you guys uh, kind of get yourself, kind of get your nerves back in check that the fight is over, um, despite how massive this room is, there's really only one other way out of this room, which is straight ahead of you. Now the question is, do you guys take it? Sure. All right. You probably should, yes. You guys, you guys make your way finally out of the reactor core. And this path, uh, thanks, to, uh, thanks to Tanbo, who is the ship's pilot? She, uh, they remained on the ship and was able to look up the, the blueprints of the science frigate that you're on right now. So yeah, they were able to direct you uh, through the reactor core, through this other path. You took some stairs and you find yourself back at the normal, like um, the normal officer levels of the frigate. Um, and according to the map you realize that this is still a straightforward path back to the docking station where your ship head is uh, docked right now. However, as you guys make your way through the path, you then hear something above you. And it sounds like chewing of flesh. Oh, that's not good. That sounds really gross. The room that you're in is like a long hallway with a bunch of computer consoles side by side. Um, and up above is like a giant uh, dangling device that displays like a bunch of holograms. It's of course broken right now. But you see that there's something standing on top of the array itself. And you can't really see what's going on because they seem to be having their back turned to you. But you just hear like this massive chewing, bone crunching, flesh ripping noise. 
and then it just kind of and then it just stops. Hmm. Yes, Haunter. Um, using like my my biomask features, would there would could I potentially um <clears throat> uh, identify if that was the same creature that we had just fought, or something similar, similar like uh, the, the little little slug things that we saw? In uh, roll me a perception check. Fourteen. A fourteen actually hits the mark. Um, you your scanner. Ooh basically tries to analyze this creature due to the angle that its back is turned to you. Um, it's actually pretty obvious to tell that this thing is not a slugger, but then your mask actually does give a reading of what its species is. It's Draconian. Ooh. Ooh. And you see the figure, the figure like slowly rise up and in his giant purple scaled hand. Oh no. You see what looks like a severed human arm with a huge bite chunk out of it and he just tosses it to the side. Now when you say human you mean like actually a human, right? Well, humanoid, but it's a severed arm. Okay. You made it you made <laughs> He made him into a cannibal humaniac. <laughs> he, was, he, was like, he was like that last time. I don't recall that ever being addressed in the last one. <laughs> he, then, he then kind of reaches in what you realize is not the body of this thing, but a long, giant black leather coat. And you see what looks like a solid dog muzzle, and he just kind of goes... Ch -ch 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 and it kind of makes the little like, um, like ceiling noise like Darth Vader's helmet do does when it like is reattached onto his suit. And then you slowly turn, and then the creature slowly turns around and looks at you. Huh. I was wondering when you all were gonna finally trace this signal. And you look above, and you see before you Dirax the supreme commander of the Quasars himself. Oh dear. Hello, Dyrex. Well now, I must say, this is a fancy little surprise. And as he kind of like fully now turns around, he reaches to hang on to the, onto the fixture with his other arm, which you realize is completely robotic. And as you look straight on as his face, he's also got like a robotic like portion of his skull with a robotic eye. And he goes, and he and he just looks at you and goes like, "I must say, I was kind of expecting someone to come here a little early. You've all missed the party." Seems we were like busy. There are, seems like there are plenty of party favors. <laughs> uh, she she doesn't look too good with all that green on her. I take it you I take it you tangled with the one that escaped. Yeah. Tangled that obvious. Is the word for it. Oh, sorry, Leah. Yeah, he was oh, a no, Leah. Like... <laughs> no, like what what Kat thinks that was perfect and then Lila just looks at the skull in her hand and goes, It's that obvious, isn't it? <laughs> I forgot the skull is in her hand. <laughs> uh, do you like my prop? I do. Thank you. That's adorable. Oh, you know, it's actually kind of funny because that is the exact size of what the skull would be. <laughs> that was great. You know, I honestly find it kind of funny. Some kid who got lost in a motionless doormat of a doctor, a disgraced flea bag, an equally disgraced hunter, a neurotic archaeologist. Huh. And he looks at Cassie and he just goes, You look familiar. Have I paid for you before? You couldn't afford me. <laughs> well, I must say this has all been very, very ravishing. However, if you have business to attend with me, I invite you all to come see me down on the surface. In fact, 
and he and you see him kind of lift up his other hand and there's a little device and he just goes in fact i officially invite you all and he presses a button and you all feel the ship shudder oh wow don't like that that's and at that great. and at that moment, alarms start to blare throughout the entire ship, and you realize it's been officially set to self-destruct. Goody. Um, we better get going. She looks at Cobalt and she says <laughs> that we should have Tombo get us out of here immediately. Yeah. Everyone back to the ship immediately now. I recommend you all hurry, and you see Dirax just unfurl his giant purple wings, and he flies through an air duct of the ship. She's like, oh, look, I can do that, too. And then she <laughs> casts Radiant Soul as these bright wings walk out from her back. And she goes, anybody else need a ride to get out of here more quickly? Cassie is going to also cast, um, oh, God, I got it. Because it's not technically an ASMR, so I got to get the name correct. Um, Wings she of Starfire. And she's going to say, yeah, I'm willing to help, too. And you just see these two bright wings that almost look like they're made out of fire shoot out from her back. All right. So I guess the question is, who all is hitching a ride and who all's going on foot? Um, I'll do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> I guess I'll go on foot. All right, well, with that being said, you guys all make a break for the, oh, Leo, uh, were you? Sorry, no, my palm itches. Oh, okay, I thought you were raising your hand. <laughs> <laughs> what about Haunter and, um, I'm sorry, Josh, Dresden. I'm gonna butcher your character's name. How do you pronounce it? Dresden. It's Dre Dre Dresden. Dresden. Oh, I'm stupid. Sorry, I was seeing Kara and Lily and Lila and it was confusing me. Uh, yeah. Kara. Kara, 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 Kara. Sorry. Uh, Kara and Lila. Yeah, I think are the two others, but yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah just Dres Dresden. Um, he's, I mean, he, he can, he has a normal walking speed of 30, so. Okay, cool. So we all no, but he's, yeah, he's, he's, like, like, he's just gonna book it. But, I mean, people that want to fly, definitely fly. It'll be make it easier just in case what some of us might accidentally fall you guys can fly down and catch us so Odd point. But, yeah all right and uh and a hunter is running on foot and what about uh what about cobalt i'm running on foot too all right um this is actually going to be very easy i think but i would like everyone to roll me athletics checks um, with Cassie and Lila have advantage because they're flying. What you do? Is you oh, perfect. Why? Why are like all my rolls now like killer, and the others were like? And then you go to athletic. Oh, and, and then you press the little stop, uh, the little square. Okay. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think that's not bad. That's like it. And then you just wait for Evan to oh. ask. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. All right. So. Uh, Cassie. Oh, okay. I got a 17, good sir. Oh, Sorry. wait, I get advantage. <laughs> Let me see if I can make it higher. And you you actually rolled a 19. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Liam. Yeah. And I'll take the 19 because I got a 4. All right. Uh, <laughs> Sylora, what did you get? I have 11. All right. Uh, Haunter. 27. Dresden. I got 23. Uh, uh, Lila. 18. And Cobalt. 18. You nice. actually all succeed. Yay! You, you guys easily make your way back. <laughs> you guys easily make your way back to the ship, and pretty much waiting for right at the entrance is Tombo going like, What are you guys waiting for? This, sh this ship's exploding right now. We gotta go. We gotta go. You know what? I should have used inspiration, but I guess... <laughs> I need the inspiration to run faster as the ship exploding. Yeah. <laughs> With everyone I now. I whip out my wire and I just start playing. <laughs> All right. So we're just trying to inside, not now. As you guys make your way finally onto the ship itself, 
um, pretty much all of you just kind of like wrestle onto the cockpit. It's on onto the cockpit, and Tombo takes your seat. She activates the engines, and you guys are able to get away. Punch it. The... Oh yeah, she uh, Tombo punches it all right. Uh, he he. They easily pull away from the frigate just as you see it just start to explode here and there and everywhere until it's just consumed by a massive explosion. That being said, though, as you guys watch the frigate, the frigate just get completely decimated. You see the image of Dyrax just flying through the vacuum of space on his wings as he passes right by your ship with a mocking little salute as he starts heading towards the surface of Talon 4. Stupid purple lizard. Cassie um, just shakes her head and goes, Excuse me, I have to go vomit. And she walks away back to her room. Kobold uh, sits down. In, he has a captain's chair, right? Yes. Okay, he sits down in his captain's chair. He looks over at Tombo and says, Tombo, set a course for the surface of the planet. And, and Tombo goes, you got it. Uh, they uh, they fiddle with the engines. Uh, his Their little snake pet kind of reaches over and like pulls a lever with its mouth. And the ship just starts angling towards t the surface of Talon for itself and just starts to book it. Yes, Dresden. He just looks over and sees the big skull there and just goes, just points at it and looks at it and goes, want No, actually, I'd like to test its blood as well. Although, speaking of, I should go clean myself. And she walks off the bridge towards her, <laughs> towards the med bay. Leah, I'm and really sorry, but all I'm getting from, like, this character's vibe is, and I know I've made, like, references to this before, but this is just what I'm getting. You made such a Simon character from Firefly, I'm kind of vibing with it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, is Simon had a baby with, uh, Spock? Spock. I'm kind of vibing with this, like. Please. <laughs> okay with that. So as everyone starts to go about their own little business, while the majority of you remain in the cockpit, Tombo is yep. just gunning right towards the surface of Talon Four, and you guys actually all realize that you have to hang the fuck on because you are going through storm clouds right now, and it is extra turbulent. Oof. In the hollow, you just hear. Oh, sorry, Josh. Go ahead. You raise your hand. That's no. proper. Yeah. My question is: Is it kind of like the Millennium Falcon, where like there's like little areas that like you can get, you can go underneath to make sure like the certain like pipes and things of that nature are working correctly, all wires are working right, and making sure the ship's running proper during that time? Uh, yes. Though in terms of overall size, the ship that you guys have. Um, while the interior is very Millennium Falcon-esque, I would say that the overall design of the ship and its overall, like, size would be closer to uh, Serenity from Firefly or the Milano from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, that, that's why I'm like, but I guess my main, my main question is, like, are there those areas, like, you lift up a hatch, you and I could go underneath as a ship's oh, mechanic, yes, absolutely, and make sure the plane, make sure the ship is going down properly. Okay? Oh yes, absolutely. Cause, yeah, because that's what I would like. That's what I imagine Dresden would do, especially with like the first little instance of like potential turbulence in space, which is a weird concept. To well, have. You're, well, you're not in space anymore. You're breaking through the atmosphere of Tower okay. Four. Just based off of pure instinct, that's what Dresden would do. He would, he would get up, unbuckle, go over there, and start making sure, going under each hatch and making sure all of the uh, gauges are correct and proper, and if not, make make adjustments so that way they aren't going to critical and things of that nature. Okay, now, Cassie, what is it? The hallway, because of the turbulence, you hear just a big thud, and you're, ah, son of a bitch! <laughs> and she fell. Okay, so Cassie takes one point of bludgeoning damage. I'll accept. <laughs> um, Carly always finds a way to give her characters one point of damage somehow. <laughs> getting, getting bit by a raccoon right. or like... The raccoon? Me being curious and me wanting to befriend it. And, look at that and, then, and then you rolled a one. So... <laughs> 
All right. So as Tombo is ch currently trying to break through the atmosphere and then finds themselves in a whole bunch of very violent storm clouds, you then just see this bright light and just a massive shudder that shakes the entire ship, and you realize you just got struck by a massive bolt of lightning in these ships. Dresden, I need you now to make an intelligence ch check. This is um, one of the Perfect. Nice intelligence? Ones. Intelligence. Uh, intelligence. A check or a save? A check. Well, okay. Perfect. 12 plus 4, that's a 16. A 16 is a 16 is actually not that bad. Um, a lot of circuits did get fried by that lightning strike, but the good news is you were able to salvage like the more higher priority ones so that the ship is still actually Perfect. flying. At that moment, what was at that moment what was once very violent turbulence suddenly becomes smooth and you realize you've all finally broken through the atmosphere as the ship just lurches to a stop and just quickly rights itself in what looks like the middle of a small clearing in a very expansive rainforest. Tonbo, with a sigh of relief, puts the brakes on, activates the landing gear, and then he just they just lean back in their chair going, Okay, who's not dead? Sound off. I'm good. Who's not dead? Sound off. That Lord is just like I might be. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I go over to Tommo and say, nice. "Wait, what was that, Liam?" I said, "I go over to Tommo and say, nice flying." Tommo oh. just gives like a very like exhausted thumbs up. All right. Well, yes, Josh Dresden. You just. At, at the sound of Dresden just takes a wrench and just knocks on, on, on like the metal grate from underneath of one of the hatches to let people know that he's there. It's not worth making a noise, a vocal noise. Uh, they know. Haunter, are you alive? Uh, yeah. All you hear really, you know, like he doesn't say or do anything that you would recognize. He just kind of turns and, and like does a bunch of clicking. There's something you don't hear the DM ask a lot. Are you alive? Right. Who's not? Who's not dead? Charlie. Wait, we can and, hear you. And uh, <laughs> lastly, Lila. Unfortunately, based on where you were during this all time, I'm getting to you, Cassie. Give me just a moment. <laughs> but unfortunately, Lila has to take precedence here because I just realized something. Unfortunately, uh, Lila. Uh -oh. I I need you to roll me a d4. We're go. We're basically going evens or odds. Oh dear. <laughs> Do, are, you, are you gonna trust D and D and beyond with that? Or are you gonna run wrong? Literally, even odds. I don't know which is going to be the better. I guess I, I don't know. <laughs> That's a two. I'm hoping evens is, is the better option. Unfortunately, <laughs> it is not in this case. Due, uh -oh. to the, due to the expansive turbulence and the lightning strike to the ship, pretty much everything that you had on shelves crashed on the floor. Oof. So, and you just... <laughs> in the cockpit, you hear, like, over the intercom system. That was quite unpleasant. And I have a lot of cleaning to do. <laughs> That's the that, that that is the Lila equivalent of no no it's fine it's fine it doesn't bother me it doesn't bother me it bothers me it bothers me a lot. It's <laughs> still green. <laughs> Look, looks at the slugger skull and that one's still green. It's just it's basically is the is the is the um, dog in the, like the fire all around them and it's the dog with the top hat just this is fine just fires yeah. Um, and lastly, Cassie. Uh, Cassie, I need you to roll me an athletics. I'm sorry, I thought you said Lila was last. No, Bitch. he did say. No. I did? That's on me. Yep. Cassie. <laughs> Cassie, uh, I need you to roll me an athletics saving throw. What the hell's that? Wait, what? 
A strength well, saving throw? I need, I need, I need de dexterity saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> All the DMs like, just had a minor aneurysm. They're like, wait, what, 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 what? Just roll the dice! <laughs> I was like, am I having a stroke? Just Where roll the that? dice! <laughs> roll the dice, roll the dice, roll the dice. Well, I I think, roll, roll, wait, if, if it's colored in, if the dot's colored in, does that mean I get advantage? No, if the dot's colored in, it means your proficiency is already added oh, to it. Yeah, it's, I it's already... I got one. <laughs> well... <laughs> after all that, after all that... What is your f score, Carly? I got a four. I got a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Carly, or Cassie... You were able to make it to your quarters, but when the lightning hit the pl when the lightning bolt hit the ship, uh, you tripped and fell and bonked your head. Again? <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> not the most graceful. You're typically this not like this. This, this might be her least bit graceful character yet. This is, un this un is like unfortunately, Cassie. You got. You kind of got emotionally tilted when you saw Dyrax, so that's why you're kind of like... <laughs> Reva, Reva definitely was a little more graceful, let's be... You know. Um, yeah. So with everyone taken into account here... Do Tonto... I take any damage for that? No, not that like time. Go. Okay. Just yeah. embarrassment damage. <laughs> Emotional, emotional damage. damage. Emotional damage. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Oh my oh, god, Abin, what is happening? I know, right? It's like we should be together or something. Oh my it's god. It's like we should be married. It's like we should live together. What even is? Yeah. Anywho, um, <laughs> as as Tombo finally takes stock of who all is still alive on the ship, Tombo does like a preliminary scan and simply goes, "Okay, okay, this is a class M terrestrial world." Getting some very strange energy readings here, but uh, hey, good news, guys! The atmosphere is totally breathable. Ow! What's the bad news? Uh, the bad news is I'm get I'm just getting some very weird energy readings from this place, and it's nothing I've seen before. So just watch your step. Oh, great! Okay, awesome. This could be a trap. It's a trap! It's a trap! <laughs> so now the question is, what does the crew of the of the White Dwarf mer uh, mercenary crew do? Uh, Hunter is going to uh, like get up and make sure all all of his equipment is is good and ready to for use, and he is going to uh, investigate the nearby area. All right, so. Haunter gets all of his stuff ready, and he's about to disembark onto the planet's surface. Is there anyone else that will join him? I'll go with him. Still in the hallway, like, my head is spinning because I smacked <laughs> my head. No, <laughs> so you, I don't know you, what... You've come to now. You're fine now. I have? Yeah. All right. I'm going to go to then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will. All right. Uh... Dresden won't. He's just going to continue to check on the ship, make sure nothing else was truly damaged or anything mm -hmm. like that, to make sure that the ship is safe or if anything else needs to potentially be repaired or restored or anything like that. All right. Uh, so far, quite a bit. Again, the ship itself does retain basic functionality, but a lot of very vital circuits did get burnt in that lightning strike, so some repairs are going to have to be made. I'm very tired. Yeah, I get that. Um, Lila, what about will... you? Oh, sorry. Oh, oh Dresden's going to start on that. Go ahead, okay. Lila. Lila is going to start cleaning because okay. she, she don't like messes. Okay, so currently at this time, we have uh, Hunter, Cassie, Silura, and Cobalt that are going to be venturing out onto the planet's surface. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Then we will start with you four. The ship opens up, and you see before you a very dark, overcast sky as you are now walking among the rainforest region of Talon 4. Forest, you say? <laughs> 
Oh, I thought that was the PlayStation startup music for a second. <laughs> oh, I feel old now. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Haunter, Cassie, Silora, and Cobalt. Mm -hmm. You look around and you find that the ship itself has essentially safely crash landed in this open clearing within this rainforest. Um, there does seem to be a uh, breathable air, as the scanners did detect. Um, the mm -hmm. water itself does seem to be perfectly H2O. Um, that being said, though, you don't quite see any signs of these strange energy readings, um, that the, uh, that the ship was picking up, that Tanbo talked about. Uh, before you, you just see some scatterings of various flora and fauna, Weird beetle-like creatures that are just kind of foraging the plants. Strange birds that are uh, going, flying through the, um, uh, flying through the sky. Um, now that all brings the question, as you see before you. Now, by the way, this is where it officially is now going to come into play. All I'm, pretty much all I'm going to do in this campaign, or at least this arc of the campaign, is that I will just explain the scenery. And the paths you can take. You can choose to investigate your surroundings a little bit more, or you can choose to take a path. That choice is ultimately going to be up to you. Pretty much the area around you is just an open rainforest clearing, but you do see three separate paths before you. You see a path that seems to follow a river that goes very low. You see a path that goes uh, straight ahead that just kind of seems to be on level ground with the, the rest of you in the ship. And then to your right, you see a path that actually seems to go a little bit higher. Though that path seems to be a little bit different as you see what looks like beyond that path, a bright blue mist that is slowly rising into the air. Now the question is, away team of the White Dwarf Mercs, what path do you take? Mm. Mm. What do you think, Captain? Um, the mist might be a little dangerous. Do you think we could scan it first? Hunter, do you have anything to scan that? No. <laughs> I don't know. What? <laughs> um, uh, <clears throat> I guess Hunter will potentially use his, using his biomass do some, like, buttons on his little loop. All right. So <laughs> the visors, I love it. Um, all right, so Haunter, roll me another, roll me an investigation check. As Miyamoto said, Haunter should put on different heads. Oh my god. Uh, 15. 15, okay. So you see, so you easily get a scan of the blue, of the strange light blue mist that seems to be rising up out into the air. Um, and you realize that whatever that mist is, it has the same energy signature that the ship was able to detect, but not necessarily identify. Okay. Um, with that being said, he is going to um, turn back at, uh, at, at, the, um, <clears throat> at the other half of the party that is outside, and he's going to um, uh, mimic the pilot's voice Strange readings, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Strange readings. Okay. So, all right. And, and what was the other path, by the way? Uh, there were two other paths: one that was straight ahead on level ground, and one that followed a river, kind of going in a downwards path. Let's follow the river. That's a good idea. All right. As you guys uh, make your way down the path and follow the river, uh, yes, Hunter. Sorry, I didn't want to like cut you off. Um, as uh, as uh, he's as he says, "Fall, uh, let's follow the river." He begins walking with the party, but just starts going off in the uh, up in the in the third path with like the the blue misty stuff without saying anything. Okay, so Haunter decided to go rogue. Oh, he does this every time. Haunter! You can't split the party more than once! Jack, you bastard! 
sorry. <laughs> well, uh, well, super bad two reference for you. <laughs> uh, Haunter, how do you react? Um, no response. If anything, he is more determined to to find something. <laughs> Investigate. His curiosity is endless. Um, well, find his way back, I'm sure. Um, so Laura, where, where do you think we should? I think we should follow the river, like the captains. Are you sure? Because I don't think you're sure. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. Okay, I let's... smacked my head two times. I think we're it. on our own, ladies. Okay. Okay, well, let's just follow the river. It's it's might as well, because I don't want to deal with the blue sparkly shit. I can only control my crew so much, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right. Uh, okay, so here's how we're going to finish off this session. We're going to focus first on the captain and the two ladies. Then we're going to focus on Haunter, and then we're going to go back to the ship. So, Josh and Leah, be ready. All right. So. Hello. <laughs> uh, Josh, I just Josh? fucking heard a noisemaker. Oh, Wait, there you guys are. Hi, we're just, we're just staying quiet because we're not in the same. Yep, right on. Okay, there. You, okay, so. Okay, so Cobalt, Cassie, and Silora. As you guys follow the river, it takes you deeper and deeper through this rainforesty region. And you see, and as you follow the path, you start to see some strange oddities about the environment. Namely, there are a lot of patchwork um, metal structures that were set up. And you realize that this is very easily Quasar tech. Um, it was it was already kind of evident from the security logs and the evidence that you picked up on the science frigate that the that the quasars already first discovered this world and made already kind of a presence on it. So they already have like a bunch of these little positions that are um, set up so that uh, they can better study the world all around them. Um, mm. Okay, hold on. I got sent a message. <laughs> All right. So, as you guys followed the river and you see more of these, like, little quasar kiosks that are kind of set up with various cables and wires that are just kind of going into the ground, uh, a, couple of the, a couple of these computer systems are intact. And they're actually kind of displaying information, though there don't seem to be any quasars themselves on site right now. That's not a good sign. No. Mm -mm. Um. What do you think he wanted? Well, I'm hoping he just wants to negotiate. But it's a little unpredictable when it comes to him. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I guess if we keep going, should we keep going? <laughs> <laughs> no, we came down here for a reason. Let's keep moving on, but I'm going to assume that this is the path that's going to lead us. That's fair. If all the quasar attack, you'll probably run into the quasars. Oh, goody. That's what I've Just always been keep waiting it for. On. Just... Keep vigilant about booby traps. All right, there. All right, you guys keep making your way, uh, following the river, and more of these little kiosks keep kind of showing up until you start to, until the path actually starts to open up. And as you see before you, the path opens up, and the river actually feeds into a giant lake before you. Um, this lake is kind of wide and expansive, and you can't really see the other side of it, but whatever is on the other side of it, you see just what looks like billows of smoke. I think I found the quasars in their city. Village thing. Nice to know that they haven't changed. Should we have brought more of the crew with us? Probably. But, like any good pirates, we make do with what we have. 
fair. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, ladies. I'll protect you if need be. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, at this time, as you come to the edge of the lake, you don't really see any actual clear-cut path forward. There don't seem to be any, like, rafts or vessels that can take you to the other side of the lake right now. And again, there just seems to be a lot of slip-shoddy made, like, quasar, like, computers and little study kiosks as they just kind of, like, are taking little spots of the environment and are just kind of, like, collecting data. Well then, maybe we should give these kiosks a look. I agree with that. Sure. We should probably let our archaeologist. I'm not the best with technology. <laughs> She's like, <"Fuck laughs> it, please, like, allow me. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Silora, you go up to one of the kiosks and you give it a quick read through, kind of typing in some buttons. Uh, the device itself is completely intact. Um, roll me an intelligence check. Okay. Did you get to your checks one more time? Oh, down there. Intelligent Wait. checks? Oh, okay, I got you. So here you go to skills. Oh, and, and do then this you get to intelligence. intelligence. In... Wait, what the Am fuck? I... Evan, wait a minute. Intelligence? Yes. Am I losing my mind? Intelligence is oh, right I'm there. Oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, is there a different place? I don't know. Okay, um, so just still looking at my computer. Yeah. It's, it's, um, just click that button. Yep. Okay. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. All right. With the fifteen, you are easily able to access the records before you, and right when you turn and right when you flip on the screen, one of the data logs appears before you. Oh, hold on. Okay, hold on. Give me just a moment. Who are you typing? I think I have an idea. All right, so Alexa, and here, this is what you did. If if you would please read it aloud for both Cassie and Cobalt. Sure. I'm doing this on a laptop. This is fun. Okay. All right. It looks like it is, it reads, uh, log 10.229.2, contact, scans of the spiral sector detect, Detected a massive energy spike um, emanating. Eman- emanating. emanating. <laughs> emanating. That's a word you don't see often. I do not, <laughs> no. Emanating from a Wanderer class planet identified as Talon 4. Scout reconnaissance was immediately dispatched to the center of the spike, a landmass at heading mark 40.08.02, returning with planetary samples and atmospheric imaging. Analysis shows the energy source to be an unstable radioactive materi- material of enormous potential. We are unable to form an accurate risk assessment at this time, but we are unlikely to find an energy source this powerful again. Analysis will continue, but currently Talon 4 appears to be a viable secondary headquarters. Mm-hmm. Isn't Talon 4 the same ship that we... that? No, Talon 4 is the planet you're on right now. No. Just kidding, I knew that. Your character did, but you didn't, and that's okay. <laughs> I have brain fog, alright? And my excuse. Ma- make a deception <laughs> check. No. Uh, <laughs> alright. Uh, Evan, do you mind posting this somewhere so so I can notice the finer details? Uh, sure. I will post it in... The okay, story? I'm gonna make a new channel in the server that's called Logs. Oh, that's so oh, smart. okay. Yeah, that's I appreciate fine. that. Yep. And, and as you guys find logs, I will record them here. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I like that. It's like unlockables, actually. And I also made a new channel called Lore. Um, that will be revealed later. All right. Mm-hmm. But yes, every log that you all uh, identify, I will post here. So, Kasten, that is what uh, Silura has read out loud before all of you, and that seems to be the reason why the Quasars are on this planet. What's a Wanderer-class planet? that That's just their own terminology. Don't worry about it. Okay. So it looks right. like the, the Quasars are trying to tap 
a possible energy source from this place. Probably. Oh, goody. I think we need to talk to, uh... I forgot the bad guy's name again. Sorry. Dyrax. Dyrax. I think we need to talk to Dyrax as soon as possible. Hmm. I don't think he's going to give us answers. He no. might. All right. If he talks in correctly, but that's difficult with him. <laughs> and with that in mind, we are now going to move the camera away from Team A and move to Team B, who is just one person right now. Haunter. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, GT! Speaking of which, where's your lady? I miss Z. She's, she's sleeping. She's sleeping. Aww. Oh, sorry. She's sleeping. She's sleeping through all this. Hey, <laughs> turn, turn down a little bit. It's okay. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so, Haunter, okay. as you make your way to the upper path, and you actually find a tunnel that takes you through the earth, uh, you're kind of stepping through like waving plants that kind of tickle your feet as you step. Um, you then come out to the other end of the tunnel, and you see before you what looks like a strange, artificially made tunnel. This one seems to be made of steel and glass, obviously more quasar design. However, it's not this structure that interests you. It is the structure that this glass and steel bridge is connected to. You see what looks like a absolutely gargantuan stone structure that is actually levitating over a massive crater on the planet's surface. And as you observe the structure, you realize there what looks like a temple carved out on the side of it. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I suppose he's going. To, uh, Haunter will move closer in a quiet manner to the uh, to this front of the temple here. All right. As you walk through, as you walk through the quasar made tunnel, you can see that this one also has a bunch of kiosks set up that are just like compiling data but it's obvious that the bridge and the temple are completely different are from completely different creations um are you kind of like just observing the tunnel as well are you or are you just gunning for the temple itself uh i was gonna check out the temple yeah okay so haunter hold on i got music for this Okay. Here it is. Haunter. You Hi. see you <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Um Haunter, as you walk through the temple, you kind of gaze around and you realize that this place is old. Like very, very old. And yet it's it's held up so amazingly well. As you look around, you see statues of what like of what looks like very tall figures in extravagantly ornate robes. Um, these these statues, the creatures that they're based on, kind of look like tall. They kind of look like your stereotypical gray aliens. You know, like no hair, no scales, huge eyes, but they have what looks like. Um, wings coming out of the sides of their heads, kind of like ears. Um, and all these statues are just in various positions of like awe, pain, combat, and they all seem to be gesturing towards the temple itself. Oh, Haunter is even more curious, and if anything, um, at this point, he is beginning to think, okay, this is where you you test to see if you're the shit. If you're like, okay, this is battle arena. Okay, well, uh, this is right up his alley to just, just to prove how much of an awesome, amazing, not a bad hunter he is. 
as you make your way through the temple, and you can see what looks like ancient writings carved in a script that you have never seen before that are just carved all over the walls. You continue... Yes? Oh, sorry. I don't I don't know if you want me to, like, raise my hand or just, like, shout. Uh, um, well, while I'm talking, raise your hand. But if you... There's a moment of silence. Just go ahead and start talking. Okay. So, um... He is, um... While walking through and looking at these uh, hieroglyphics, basically, he is going to, like, scan them to look for, like, uh, like, put it in, in, in I guess, like, his biomask memory. All right. Roll me an intelligence check. No, de- sorry, that's not that one. That was investigation. Uh, thank God, twenty-one. All right, so roll me an intelligence check. Okay, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay, yeah, your visor is easily able to translate uh, these runes, and then hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna get like a soundboard going. I promise. I just gotta figure it out. <laughs> All right. So, as you scan the hieroglyphics and they get automatically translated for you, GT, I'm sending it to you now. This is what you read. I'm so scared. Okay. Do I read it? What do I do? Uh, Where you do- can uh, read it out loud for for the class. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. Except none of us are there, so. Yeah, none of you are there. Oh. Okay. Cool. Um. Read it so we know. Okay. As the audience. Gotcha. Gotcha. I forgot this is actually a stream. Um. What up with my phone? Oh, my goodness gracious. Clickety click. Okay. It reads. Cradle. None know if our temple, the Cradle, will prove powerful enough to contain this evil forever. For now, it wraps around that abomination, cutting it off from the world above. However, we believe the power or cipher, which has been produced by linking the five keys, should be strong enough. The fate of this world is now left to the seven who will collect all the keys in the future. The time when the entrusted ones know... (laughs) The time when the entrusted ones know is approaching. Mic drop. Read it. Haunter, as you continue making your way to the temple, and you kind of you kind of weave a path past all these hieroglyphics and you then see before you a massive platform with five statues. Okay. Um, five statues. Well, sorry, I, w- I wasn't done yet. That was on me. Sorry. I kind of took a breath there and it was too long of a pause. You then see these five statues on this massive stone platform. Unlike the statues around the temple, all of these five statues are structured the same way, which they're all kind of bent low, hunched over, and their hands look to be holding something. Okay. Well, actually, well, their hands are empty right now, but they look like they're meant to be holding something. Okay. Um, I feel like Contra would definitely put two and two together, like, okay, these five statues are meant to hold the five keys. Um, uh, I assume this would be like a dead end because these statues would need the keys to potentially open up the a next door or something. Um, is, does it, uh, is there no other rooms in this temple or is, or is that the end? The um, day? roll me a perception check. I'm gonna like roll amazing for like anything but combat. Yep. 22? 22, all right. Uh, yeah, you've pretty much got a firm lay of the land with this temple, and yeah, this is a dead end right here. However, 
Um, as old as this place is, and there's just like sand and dust covering everything, as you look around, you catch something out of the corner of your eye. And you kind of look towards the edge of the platform itself, and you see what looks like a small hint of green. Like shining green. Okay. Um, I want to sneak up on one of the whatever the f that was with freaking uh wrist blade unsheathed, just like you know, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As you get closer and closer, you realize it's not a creature or anything that you've seen before. As you just kind of get a closer look and a gust of wind kind of blows by and it blows the dust off, you realize what you see before you is a small green sphere. I pick it up. You black out immediately. Moving oh, on. Shit. Oh, oh, shit. Uh, now, we are now going to move on away from Haunter. <laughs> ha! <laughs> uh, <laughs> moving away from Haunter. <laughs> I thought I was gonna be the first one to pass out, but I was wrong. That's a plot twist. <laughs> um, Carry on. He killed the would-be predator. I don't know. <laughs> um, as you guys, so now we will. This is where we're gonna end the session. So now, moving back to the ship, we're gonna start with Dresden here. So Dresden, tell me what exactly are you doing right now? Dresden is checking out all of the systems he is like going underneath each one of like the specific hatches like whichever one um kind of has the control panel for like the wa water system the one that would like control the lights the one that would control life systems in general <laughs> all right wrong pipe and then I got distracted here for a second um and then like whichever like all the different systems he would check them all and be recording on you know whatever like digital tablet type thing he would have to mark to mark out kind of like what needs fixed what's fine um you know what's not fine what is needed for sure to get off the planet should we need to get out in a hurry you know kind of doing a checklist and then organizing it in a way to like of importance of like okay what ha what for sure has to be good and what could still be quote unquote broken but but we could still take off without it being you know completely fixed and that would be sort of like the lowest priority stuff and then like the high and make sure that he has the things needed for the highest priority stuff because like like we said in the very first episode dresden's room is might as well be like like top like be like a mechanics dream workshop type deal like he has a little bit of everything in there it's a bit of it's a bit organized chaos but like you even if you it looks chaotic that even a person could tell like there is organization to this madness all right awesome so Dresden, as you make the repairs here and there, uh, trying to see what you guys can kind of live without versus what really needs fixing, uh, Dresden, yeah. I would like you to make me another intelligence check. Perfect. Cool. Intelligence. Let's see here. Tonight is the night of this dice liking to roll a 15. So 15 plus 4 is a 19. Okay, so with a 19, you got a pretty good idea of what's happened to the ship. Uh, the good news is um, you still got life support. has pr is perfectly intact, so you guys have no need to worry about running out of food or water. Um, yeah. Pretty much all scanning systems are still completely uh, functional as well. So if you guys need to quickly study something on the outside or bring something into the ship, that all works as well. The only thing that really seems to <coughs> might be an issue are the ship's engines. Now, now let me now to bring to be more specifically, the engines do work, but the problem is at this moment with this with the specific circuits being burnt right now. You don't exactly have you don't exactly have the necessary power 
to be able to reach escape velocity and break Talon 4's gravity. If you were able to get yeah. back into space, you you would be perfectly fine. But right now the problem is just like leaving the planet right now. You can you can kind of hover over the surface and kind of fly among it, but you wouldn't be able to actually break through the atmosphere again. Would um, Dresden be able to see if there were certain things that the ship could necessarily live without and be able to reroute power to help out the engines and if, and if so kind of calculate how long that would take to do um in this case yes it's one of those situations where you know precisely what to do that could basically be the right option to fix this problem the problem is just the actually doing it it's not like all of these circuits that keep the ship going are the same kind of circuit. Each function of yeah. the ship has different hardware and software. And the circuits that got burnt out that help with the escape velocity thrusters, those got especially burnt. And unfortunately, there's no real other like circuits on the ship that can be a suitable replacement. They can keep things going for a while, but they wouldn't last. Um, yeah. Now, this is something that you can definitely make. Um, mm -hmm. However, at this moment, you don't have the necessary materials for such a specific component of the ship. Um, now, that be now that being the case, though, just because it's now kind of public knowledge that the Quasars have such a presence on this planet, you might be able to salvage something from from like Quasar tech, because they yeah. they they are known to pilfer and reverse engineer and just make shit up on the fly. So there's no reason why you can't do the same. Yeah, cool. Um, now, with that being said, we are finally now going to move the camera to Lila here. Lila, yeah, un Lila, unfortunately, the science lab is a mess. Don't like that. <laughs> uh, the the good news is all of your actual like computer equipment and tools; those are all intact. What pretty much just fell on the floor are a bunch of, like, glass jars of medicine, samples, books, and it's all in glass jars. So there's, like, it's just shattered on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, the skull is dirty, but is it otherwise intact? It is because of how much of an awesome Skinner Haunter is. Uh, yeah, that skull is, like, in pristine condition. Perfect. Perfect. Beautiful. That's... She's gonna make sure to put that, like, in a... more of a... Kind, kind of like a, a... solid stand where she can put it for now until she can more thoroughly study it. Mm-hmm. And then she's going to start, she's just kind of going to look around and take a bit of a stock of how, what she's going to have to remake, what, she, you know, what kind of supplies she might need and to verify what they have with what she might need to gather from the planet. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, that's, right. that's her, her biggest concern is making sure they have the medicine that they need. Okay, so the good news is, due to your skill level, remaking this medicine is going to be a cinch. It's just going to be a hassle to do it all over again. <laughs> um, now that being said, though, now, Lila, I would like you to roll me an intelligence check. Ooh. A dirty 20. All right. Yeah. With a dirty 20, yeah, pretty much everything that broke you can easily make, like, overnight if Talon 4 has a night cycle. You don't know. You've never been here before. Um, but, yeah, pretty much everything here can be made, like, over an eight-hour period, and then after you clean up the glass, it'll be like nothing ever happened. Um, now, that being said, though, um, I need to know, does Lila wear gloves? Yes. Oh, gosh, yeah. Okay. So even with gloves, as you are holding that skull before you put it away, you actually do feel that, like, slight tingling in your hands. It's not enough to truly affect you, but it is it is still very noticeable. 
fascinating. I'll have to find out more about this later. And she puts the skull up and then she goes to start cleaning up. Uh, as you clean up, Lila, you realize that tingle in your hands has not left. Lila, I would like you now to roll me a history check. Ooh. Historia. So, for all. 18. Oh, this dice is doing nice. All right. I, 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 I have to ask. Josh, did I just hear you start singing the Sephiroth song? No, we we we, we do that randomly throughout the day with different names. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought you were parodying Notorious. What? I thought he was parodying Notorious. No, Notorious. Yeah. I I definitely heard Sephiroth. <laughs> I did say Sephiroth. <laughs> All right, with um Lila. That tingling in your hands flashes you back to a memory from one of your, from something that you learned uh, during the during the many lessons that you underwent when you got all of your medical knowledge, and that's when it finally clicks in your head. While it may not exactly be lethal, or possibly even affect you in any clear-cut way, that skull was radioactive. should probably find out if Hunter is all right. With that, <laughs> with that being said, we are now going to cut to Tonbo, who is still in the cockpit. Uh, they're just kind of like looking at readings of the planet, just kind of getting a curious, just kind of feeding into curiosity as he le as they learn more about Talon 4. Uh, he's then going to open up the comm links. Hey, Dresden, how are repairs coming? What's the status of the ship? Mm. Slow. But... Mm. Need to find new parts. Okay, well, we've been in worse. Uh, mm. Lila, how are you doing back there? The skull is radioactive. I should probably find Haunter and find out if he is alright. Don't worry. It's only mildly radioactive. Radioactive. I'm sorry, did you bring something radioactive on my ship? I said it's fine. <laughs> it's only mildly radioactive. It won't kill us. <laughs> someone radio. put that in the someone put that in what the, the code. Fuck? Please. Evan. Evan. I got you said this one this time we weren't gonna give everybody cancer like the first campaign. What the fuck? <laughs> well now we all have we all have cancer. Great. <laughs> um uh, Tombo just goes like, okay, only mildly radioactive. Uh, yes. they, they then switch over the comm link and they contact uh, Captain Cobalt. Hey, uh, Captain, how are things going on out there? Well, we may have an idea of what the cars are, but besides that, we need a little. Wait, Li uh, Liam, you like broke in and out so much. I barely got like every other word. I said it looks. We may have an idea of what the quasars are doing, but. To talk to the captain more. All right. How's everyone else doing over there? I mean, we're alive. Just dandy. <laughs> Cassie, are you going to say anything? <laughs> oh, we're currently following a trail that's going to potentially lead us to the quasars. We probably should have brought back up. I'm not a very good liar. Um, but, um, you're gonna learn. We definitely need a healer. Well, what do you mean by backup? Isn't isn't Haunter with you? Uh, oh, well, here's the thing. Um, is Drast is is, is Drast in there? Who? Dresden. Dresden. Oh. Sorry. <clears throat> Dresden. Haunter left again. Haunter <laughs> again. Can, 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 can I can I can I make this officially PG thirteen and use the one time we can say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dresden just goes, "Fuck." <laughs> yeah, that was gonna be my reaction, but I tend to try not to cuss. Um. Idiots. Yeah. 
I said put him on a baby leash. No, don't do that. Oh, he would have figured out how to get him out of uh, that. Are you positive I'm about that, though? I'm very positive. <laughs> I'm not saying sure sometimes. <laughs> all right, honest. all right. Calm down. Hold on. I'll try and contact him. Give me just a moment. Good luck. Uh, there, there, there's uh, a part of me that wants to see if I can make a cannon that Dresden has put a tracker everyone, and everyone with their permission to make sure and he knows where the party is at all times and he can just like look it up on his iPad, his like little digital yeah. tablet. And... Um, now that being said though, Haunter, you are still blacked out right now. Um, that means... <laughs> uh, so basically Tompo just goes, okay, Haunter, can you hear me? Hunter? Hunter? Are you being a method actor right now, GT? <laughs> or did you just cut out? Yes. <laughs> there, there, there's a part of me that just wants to go. Mm -hmm. uh, at that moment, Tanbo just kind of like now opens up the channel to the entire rest of the crew, not just one at a time. Hey, uh, guys? I think Mahanter might be in trouble. He's not responding. Yeah. Mm. I told mm. you. Don't listen oh, to me. No. Captain, what One should we... Oh, God. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, God. <clears throat> hey, shitty hunter. Wake up. There is no response. That's that's mm. concerning. That's very concerning. Yeah, actually. That's not good. <laughs> you you yeah, know that like you that? know that Haunter that? would definitely wake up when you call him a shitty hunter. If which, is somebody, why, which is why Dress had said it. He really wanted to. Somebody put a tracking beacon on him, or. <laughs> and uh, guys, maybe you should all try and find him. And yeah. and with that, that is where we end tonight's session. <laughs> all right. Fair. Good night. Good night. Oh, right, guys. Uh, first, uh, first off, we said mildly radioactive. <laughs> mildly. Uh, okay, guys. First off, we do apologize for the obscenely late start, uh, but I'm glad we got everything working again. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as always, this will be up on YouTube sometime. I know I'm I'm lacking in sessions that have yet to be uploaded, but I'll get on that. I swear. And with that, guys, stay safe, take care. We will see you all next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Good.